uh, initially uh, you know i was learning uh, on both the sides i would say retail and itc so in terms of processes how things are done etc and then in 2013 is when uh, the lulu mall raymond shop opened so there i was uh, you know uh, lucky enough to be involved right from scratch Uh, in the sense that you know when the drawings were made of how the shop architecture will be etc so uh, that was a great you know learning experience so when you're working for a you know very large mnc you're just a spoke in the wheel you know which is driving the organization but suddenly here you're put in the driver's seat and you have to drive everybody who's uh, you know under you so it's a very contrasting uh, experience for me and so far uh, considering that you know i worked for a couple of years and i have been involved in the business for a couple of years everything i do i look in, at in uh, that context you know that okay when i when we are working professionally uh, when a large organization functions there are lots of controls checks balances which have to be put only then you can be scalable so even when i'm here i look at things in that perspective so you might have uh, you know multiple businesses but you need to look at each shop each unit as a individual business unit see how it is performing have your own dashboards and controls to see that okay is this earning money for you because there at times a, a, you know a group when you're a big group of family of multiple businesses some things perform well some things do not perform well but still from a financial point of view or from a control point of view it is important to look at each business unit separately that is one thing and second thing is uh, when you're uh, you know if if tomorrow we we have to be ready for uh, scaling to five times 10 times of what we are today we have to be very sure that all the things that are happening at the ground level are under our control yet you know there is only a certain level of involvement that we can do uh, because there are only 25 uh, you know 24 hours in a day so that is extremely important to make sure that your processes controls checks balances are put in place Uh, so that you are ready to you know take that uh, next step so i think that is something that we learn from uh, these big organizations because they, they are working across the globe yet they have their uh, you know processes in place to make sure that things don't go wrong so uh, right now i am involved in the uh, lulu mall uh, raymond shop and we've also opened a new uh, concept uh, that is made to measure by raymond which is a very very forward looking uh, concept which brings together uh, the custom tailoring aspect and ready made aspect of clothing because uh, it takes uh, measurements and the uh, garment is sent to the factory to be made as a ready made garment customized to your size so that's a new initiative which we have taken and uh, yeah so the, the, that's about it i think i won't take much of your time but uh, like i said uh, like and like he also mentioned when you are in a uh, after you work for a while in an organization and you come to a fam or in in a business setup it's very important to keep yourself motivated every day because uh, you know you have to evaluate yourself what are you doing even if you know you can do a small thing to make uh, somebody who's working for you his job easier you can give a pat on your back saying okay you did something good today so i think that is extremely important uh, uh, yeah that's it thank you yeah these three kids are all gold medalists in their mbas and uh, music as a common factor when these people uh, play instruments and they're learning new ones also uh, she is a great dancer wow i'm very surprised you know because recently at a rotary function she did the thiruvadra in such a beautiful manner that people were surprised uh mr deep deep bhai yes sir Uh, there are lot of business people in ernakulam not only one deepak they are all known as great leaders in business but uh, sir deepak is not known as a businessman you are known as a perfect nice gentleman okay that uh, my question to you uh, who is be a uh, better role model for your children in business yourself or your father 
don't want to answer it, uh, I can leave it. <laughs> No, it's not really I don't want to answer the question because, see, the uh, environment in which both of us uh, operated uh, were totally different, you know. Uh, my father started off with virtually nothing. He wanted to ask about the metro. Okay. Two minutes. And uh, we came in on a much better wicket, actually. Uh, the ball was coming to the bat. So it was easier to play the shots uh, when we were there. But we had to really uh, work hard because the real growth of the business really took when uh, came in because we brought in something which we had learned. See, whenever you do your MBA, I would recommend to many people who are doing their MBAs, it's better to work for some time and then go do your MBAs because then you can understand the concepts much better. In our case, what happened was, fortunately, since we were in the business, we were able to understand many of the concepts. So I was probably the youngest in my class. But then I could understand and probably explain to the other students also that this is what is actually happening because of the knowledge I had about the business. There was one major advantage. The other thing was traditionally, and when you go back to the older world, my father was one person who believed that he should not borrow money. And the first thing that you learn when you come into financial management in MBA. Borrow money from bank or from? From anywhere. anywhere. I mean, he wants to sleep peacefully. That is why when I said the balance sheet that he prepared was a reverse balance sheet. That is, he wanted to find out how much money he owed or what are the assets he had to pay off those uh, liabilities. But that limits your growth. No, no, I'm coming back to that. Yeah, but that is a peace of mind. I think I'm yeah. saying generational. So I'm coming back to that point where uh, the first thing that we learned when we come into uh, business, I mean financial management, is break even points, leverage, and so on and so forth. So, the first concept that I used in the business was leverage. That is, we started borrowing. If your debt equity ratios and all are uh, perfect and they fit into the scheme of things and your business is running that way, because when I first came into the business, we didn't have stocks to sell. Whatever you sold every day, that day you had to pay the company, go pick up the stocks from the transporter, then go back to the market. It was like, you know, hell virtually. We didn't have enough money to spare at that stage. When we used leverage, we also realized my father was paying income tax through his nose. Because everything was profit. So when you take off the interest costs, then you're saving that much amount of income tax also. So, uh, when you are, for that answer to your question is, you know, I felt that we did a lot more than uh, what my, my father was really stuck because he had to survive. We were more adventurous and uh, when you are adventurous, you sort of relish it uh, uh, better because you are able to achieve certain uh, ambitions and goals. I think I have a, yeah, uh, just a related question. You told about this first, second, third, and fourth generation. Yes. Uh, first generation stocks it out, which is, of course, your father. Second generation is, they work, you build it up. Third generation slows it down. But from what your son says, you know, presented, I don't see a sign of any slowing down in this out. Uh, not and really. Fourth generation, sort of, you're right. I have also read such surveys. They're absolutely right. But I think in your group, I am finding just the reverse. I think that's what. I could sense. I mean, there's nothing in terms of slowing down. Would you like to respond to that? Yes, of course. See, the third generation actually, see, typically if you go and uh, extend the uh, growth that the second generation has done, uh, you also have to provide the opportunity for the third generation to grow that way. If you provide them all the ease of life and, you know, the first thing is, okay, the moment he joins the business, the first thing I do is give him a BMW car and I give him a uh, thousand rupee ward note like what the Delhi guys are doing then obviously that guy is going to uh, run over somebody on the footpath and land up in Gurgaon and guzzle up all the gear, uh, beer in that part of the country this is happening in Bombay also but with the values that they have I still remember you know these boys and these children are extremely well traveled I think uh, Sushil has seen more countries than even I have seen but when it comes to shopping, he does not let his mother shop. He says, save the money for better things. 
frugality. During one of the trips abroad, uh, we were a group of about 10 families traveling together. In those days, uh, the, many people had small children like of their age. So in that group, uh, there were many children who were pestering their parents, ke, buy me this, buy me that, buy me that. But these two kids were saying, I have this also, I have this, it's okay. Like they were not uh, jumping at everything. So uh, their parents were asking us, ke, how come your children are not fighting and crying and making a big scene out of it? So that, that's what talks about their probably values and uh, even today, and one, uh, one more thing I remember, when they were small, they were made to travel to school by cycle rickshaw, though we could afford cars and things were there. But we thought, let them go there and mix all types of children and then, you know, have a real life experiences. Probably that's the reason. Yeah, talking of cycle rickshaws, you know, when you uh, are kids and things like that, uh, when you ask children, you know, what is your ambition? Our man says that I want to be a cycle rickshaw man. Because he was his hero, because he used to take him to school. And there was a time, you know, when we were doing carpooling and I used to take Shweta also to school. <laughs> was I your, your hero at that time? <laughs> Not just at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but uh, the third generation, I think, also should learn. There is, you know, education never ends. That is one firm belief that I have. Uh, I even can go to the... Uh, um, rudest extent and say that even the, at the moment that you are dying, you are learning how to die. So, uh, the more you can, uh, um, you know, study, learn, there is so much to do in this world, one lifetime is just not enough. Even today as we talk and as we talk to you, it's not that I am sitting and yakking away to glory and trying to uh, raise myself into the skies or something. I am learning something from you people also. There are so many seniors here and the seniors are listening to me. I am getting an honor out of it also. So, uh, when you talk of being a gentleman, a gentleman is a person, you know, who uh, just does not flash around or do something like that. Uh, two or three small things which we uh, have learnt is uh, don't expect from people, you know. The moment you have expectations from people, like, okay, that I am doing this and uh, he should do this, that moment you are going wrong. You do what is you can do and what you think is best. Your biggest strength is your conscience. <coughs> if your conscience says what you are doing is absolutely right, just go for it. And that's what life will take one forward. And like uh, Neha was saying, at the end of the day, what is it that you want? You want a good night's sleep. And if you can get that, I think uh, that is bliss and peace. So I'll take your question on the metro, sir. Yeah. No, you were asking, yeah. has uh, metro affected, affected business? Uh, it has definitely affected, sir. What has actually happened is, it is a most unthoughtful uh, piece of uh, decision making that the government has done. The objective of taking a decision like that was basically to show some form of development, particularly in the infrastructure side. But without considering a lot of scientific facts that, you know, you don't have the actual size of roads, you are not looking at the fact that alongside the fact that your population of vehicles is increasing in uh, at a faster rate than what uh, uh, it is actually right now. Even for the current traffic, I mean, uh, number of vehicles, the roads are not enough. So, if you start looking at uh, five years from now, where, you know, a family which did not have a single car suddenly has a car for every individual in the family, the cars are getting less expensive, more competition is taking place, more vehicles are available. There was a time you had to wait eight years to get your first Fiat car. Or if you wanted a Vespa scooter, it used to be like getting a lottery. From that position onwards, now you are getting a car at your uh, doorstep, you don't have to pay for it. Sometimes you don't have to pay interest for it also. And uh, like I was saying, you know, uh, was I telling this audience to somebody else yesterday, I was speaking to a bunch of students, that the type of bikes that the students are using today are of no relevance to the roads that they are using. You are doing a, taking a thousand cc bike and you travel into one of these roads at that particular speed, get into one of those potholes, 
where do you go the bike will go for at least some 20 30 somersaults but you will reach heaven in no time so that was the condition the nat pack results are telling us that in another 2 uh, or 3 years time the average speed of vehicles running on the road is going to be 6 kilometers per hour why do you need a vehicle but in the in the medium term though it is affecting business now okay. yeah so so i'm just coming so the metro was actually not required and also the fact that a different route could have been uh, followed there were there are ultimate number of uh, alternatives for every problem there are 100 solutions god has provided those solutions we have to find them out we could have rerouted the metro into a different direction what in ernakulam has happened is we are bounded by the backwaters in one side in between we have the railway track and then from there onwards we are moving into the eastern side of the city the western side of the city and probably the northern side of the city we are not able to uh, you know reach the in the regular fashion even to reach the north you have to go first to trichur and then turn you are not able to go directly on this particular along the coast uh, so that being the case uh, traffic is always coming in from one direction <coughs> there is no solution found for that so what has actually happened here now is uh, nobody can actually now enter this part of the uh, city that is mg road all the roads coming into mg road are blocked now in a typical city there are two major uh, uh, places that you look at one is the high street mg road once upon a time broadway was the high street from there it shifted to mg road and now it's moving towards the bypass and if we don't do something very strongly about mg road the high street value of mg road will be lost so what is happening is because no traffic is coming no parking is being allowed and also the fact that where we had something like uh, 4.8 lakh square feet of retail shopping space today we have something like 50 lakh square feet space in the last 3 years the population of cochin or uh, ernakulam district has grown by just 5000 people 5000 people and you've got an extra 45000 square feet of shopping space so all the ROIs yeah so w- what happens to all the ROIs on square foot basis that we were talking about so a lot of businesses are collapsing what is happening in ernakulam is everybody is starting up businesses uh, there is a certain glamour quotient which is given particularly the boutiques that the ladies are starting in uh, panampli nagar it will be a star or a starlet who starts off a boutique uh, first 6 months everybody will go to that particular place or a restaurant where everybody goes there only after the 6 month yes uh, success story the marks mark should comes out the food is all lousy and this and all that we will not go the word of mouth spreads you move to the next uh, restaurant which is opening or the next boutique or the other woman would be getting angry because you went to the other lady's shop but in the high street uh, mg road uh, we are governed by gold shopping and wedding shopping which has not actually moved to the rest of the uh, city as long as that is there we are ardently and sort of hoping that mg road should recover some of its old wedding shopping glory not regular shopping the regular shopping will definitely go back to the Uh, shopping malls and other places where it is convenient for people to go and park and buy. Can the other central malls survive? Pardon, sir. Can the central malls survive? The uh, the same story of uh, basically you know a college student entering into a mixed college. You know, he sees the first beautiful girl and starts running after her. The next batch another girl comes in. Then he starts looking at her. Then after six months, another girl, new entrant comes. So she starts looking at her. This is the mall story in India today. Out of something like two hundred malls in the country today, you can count on your fingers about twelve malls that are doing well, and that too primarily because each of these malls has got a certain speciality about it. I'll give you an example in Delhi, where you have the Emporio Mall. The Emporio Mall is basically dealing with 
real high value high fashion brands so the uh, ultra rich people go there to shop because of the snob value why do you go to lulu mall to shop today because you have a unique hypermarket you take away the hypermarket from lulu there is no difference between that mall and any other mall so it is that extra thing that any mall can offer that will also help you out the problem with the malls also again is that uh, people are forgetting about the fact that to enter the mall and exit the mall is also taking time no but the problem with these malls is basically uh, like i was telling you the uh, costing now what happens is uh, the cost per square foot in a mall is on an average running into something like between 250 rupees to 300 rupees per square foot which in comparison to a shop on let us say kalur kadwantra road or on the bypass is ranging around 70 rupees the product is the same product is not changing your uh, shop interiors will not change it is only the fact and probably you might get a bigger selection today seema t is giving you a much better selection than celebrate in lulu mall that is the reason why celebrate is not selling and no mall can actually achieve what jay lakshmi is doing or uh, uh, lulu is doing probably they can achieve what kalyan is doing because it's kalyan is a little more hodgepodge but the best of uh, uh, silks and the fashion wear is in jayalakshmi and the mass is in uh, cmrt take the gold shops for example will you shop from the mall or will you shop from bima or uh, josco here or for that matter malabar gold here unless the selection is equivalent to or better than what is already there why would you actually go to the mall to shop uh, uh, with the risk of uh, let's say 1 lakh people waiting to grab your bag so these are all given by yes it was a excellent i think your business has influenced the malayali what in malayali has learned the business from your brand. sir i will tell you the thing one of the reasons why uh, father, father brought in this model and you of course i mean you sketched up and you know modernized what you call it your children of course they have the passion they have the experience and they have the educational background certainly i'm sure sky is the limit but why you didn't try for some manufacturing sir I, mean, i i am sure that you will not tell that's because of the labor not really because uh, if you take manufacturing uh, the only period that manufacturing really succeeded in kerala if you take history is that during our great tv thomas uh, period isn't it oh, tv thomas tv thomas the cpi gauriyamma's uh, husband and that too basically because we were power surplus at that stage if you take the industries that came into kerala at that stage they were all power intensive industries and all of them have collapsed because of the reason the power costs have gone up after that no but uh, uh, where, where are the wrong actually your family have let up No, I would rather have followed you, sir. Because I did, I did, I did, and very frankly, I did come to you also, because I thought agriculture would be a better uh, option, because at least it's in your hands and you know what to do, and uh, the scale at which we wanted to do at that stage, and learning from you 
I think that would have been a much better option, be it in Kerala or even outside of Kerala. Good processing for that matter. Absolutely. You know, and uh, yeah, um, I'm sure you were sent. So that was one of the reasons why he was sent for engineering. That's what I'm trying to come to that. Kind yeah. Of Brilliant sons you have. No, he was no, sent for. Yeah. They are still here and their family was able to influence them, encourage them to be in Kerala. I think the time is coming, sir. I think the time is coming for uh, people to really get in. Because I, I have been watching th things, visiting places. In fact, when uh, you visit uh, the Kinfra food park in uh, Nellad, you really get the example that it's a different country altogether. And some of the products that people are doing, but what everyone is doing basically is importing the product from there, just converting it and doing things. Then I have a request to you. Do attend I mean, the Rotary Club, Lions Club, and all. I think they are going to come to Thai and CIA as yeah. well. Can, can we can share our experience in manufacturing? Sure. We are not made much of noise in Kerala. Still, they did well. They are surviving that. So, let's work together. I mean, send them to bring it to They're all yours, sir. Yes. No, I'm, I'm serious. No, no, absolutely. Mm. I think he has got a question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's very nice to see a, a family uh, openly speak about your grassroots and uh, you know where you are today. I think, you know, the average Malayali culture has an arrogant streak, a proud attitude that seems to prevent them from succeeding in business because, you know, for them, more than service, it's about themselves, unfortunately. And of course, I'm very happy that you refer to the metro and its uh, routing problem. It really is a major problem, you know. I was fortunate to live in about half a dozen of the best cities in the world and uh, use transportation and, uh, you know, I was always into a learning mode and I wanted to come back to India. And uh, I recently went to Chennai and uh, took the metro. I was shocked. The quality is fairly good. Unfortunately, it's a gross failure. Yes. There's hardly anybody traveling on it. The cost is 40 rupees for a trip and you can take the same trip for 11 rupees on the bus. And uh, it's like a... Uh, a museum where uh, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, it's to show that we have done this, and it's empty. It's empty, and it's making the trips, and half the infrastructure. What's the best thing about Google? Apart from it's a great product, it's free. They make their money from the stock market or from the advertising. Third party pays. I think if this metro in Chennai is made free, it will have people. It will reduce pollution. It will take the vehicles away from the roads, you know, and it will have uh, use. It will be something that is useful. Something of that kind ought to be done in uh, Cochin. If not, you're going to have the same thing happening here and no parking. So, you know, these things can only come from NIT leadership. And maybe your family should get into political leadership in some way in the town, in the city, because that's where the changes are going to happen. Because, you know, you know you're not going to have uh, retail <coughs> environment or you know the opportunity to succeed in business if the so-called decision makers uh, don't do their job and now you know I, I'm somebody who unfortunately says Kerala is one of the most little places in the world with the most number of idiots absolutely right I, I don't mean that in any uh, negative sense of anybody but this is the truth we have a problem I mean I go to the next stage and say it's maybe because we have too much human feces in the water supply in India that we all think this way. And this is not stretching the point, but it is the truth. Yeah. The area where I'm focused on as a physician and in business is to create transformation. You have done that to a degree. And I think your family unity and the you know, uh, great uh, communication that you have among family members is probably the best testimony. Now my final point or the question is this. 
do you think uh, um, there is a, 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 a possibility of Cochin for that matter, because you've operated in Cochin, having a whole different mindset? And is that possible? For instance, can you reverse retailing and create the logistics for collecting garbage? There's so much money in it. Yes, absolutely. And uh, uh, you know, where is it that we can bring social responsibility and transformation, you know, in, in, into a practical, into a reality? I'll answer the question uh, one by one. I've got one more example of the metro uh, in comparison to Chennai. Uh, Bangalore is another classic case where the metro has failed. It has actually destroyed a beautiful street called the MG Road. Today, the entire shopping in MG Road has gone for a six. They've tried all the methods by getting buses, these number metro buses and all that stuff, but still nobody wants to travel by the metro. Uh, the uh, secondary thing to the transportation there also is, had we concentrated more on the roads and uh, things that we are doing uh, with the express highways and the four-lane traffic for the uh, rural areas and all that, if we had better roads within the city, Today, what is happening to the uh, price of uh, vehicles, uh, used cars and uh, second-hand cars? Today, you can buy a Maruti at the price of a scooter, isn't it? And you're able to transport how many people? How does an Ola work today or a Uber work? Today, you, can, you are able to get a Uber or an Ola car cheaper than an auto rickshaw. And why should I travel by metro? Now let me just finish that uh, question that he was at actually. So that was uh, that is a major problem that is going to happen now. In Bombay today, if you get off the airport and you go straight into the flyover, below the flyover there are something like thousand tab taxis waiting for lack of occupancy because there are no takers. Because people in Bombay will not travel in anything but the but the local train. It is in their uh, blood that I can travel the fastest only by the local train. Yeah. So here what happens is, like we did talk about egos for example. Now if you want to go on a given Sunday for a wedding, would you travel by any other transport but by a chauffeur driven car? You want to be seen outside a shop uh, when you go for shopping that you have come in by a car and somebody has driven you out there so that you get more respect from the guy who opens the door and if the salesman happens to see you he might give you slightly better service or give you a little more respect it is that one three letter word that we talk about ego and this ego is like uh, available in Kerala in plenty the other thing that we have in Kerala and I'm going a little off track right now is the fact that uh, you know, uh, we always think of the other guy at the wrong time. That is, when he gets something good at his house, we want that. You lend him some money and you want back your money and you are scared or you are ashamed to go and ask for that money. What is the logic there? That's right, yeah. No, because you know, when you went into a textile shop. Yeah. But today, smile is a rare commodity in Sir, when you went into the radiar shops uh, in the initial stages, they would talk only their language, mostly Telugu. And uh, if they realized that you are not going to shop, there was a code word called JP. Do you know what JP is? Joker party. So we realized it a little, as we got into the textile trade, we started understanding that this is what it really meant. That is, these guys have come here only to see and they will not buy. So that's the JP and Chuma Kanichu. To the extent that some of, I won't take the name of the shop, the sales girl even holds your hand. Even if you are a male, she holds your hand. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah, one one last thing, sir. You are talking about the free metro. Uh, the one lesson that we've learnt in life is, anything free is not valued, sir. You give anything free, it is just not valued. People will suspect you for that. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, actually, the thing is, uh, to add to what you said, just said, Google is not free, sir. You and I are its products. Now, coming back to Ola, I was surprised, you know, uh, I went to Bangalore and I uh, took a uh, rickshaw, auto rickshaw. And when I used to pay 1,000 bucks, 1,000 rupees, you know, I had to pay, uh, he took 250 rupees. And once he started the auto rickshaw, he suddenly stopped. I thought maybe, you know, he made a mistake and he's going to come back. You know, he just got out of the auto, waved to me and said, um, give me a good rating. I mean, I don't have much rating, so you have to give me a good rating. So what used to cost 1,000 rupees, you know, is being done for 250 rupees. There's no bargaining, everything's so transparent. So whatever brings transparency into a business is going to is going to disrupt whatever you know how things are. Played. And personally, what I take from this uh, session is your humility, sir. That's up to your family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Maybe one last question. Can I give the mic here? Maybe. See, uh, I would uh, go to very specific on to something which we talk about uh, online shopping, which is going to come in. See, currently I am also into a distribution, which is into a machine paints, uh, automotive. So I am also looking at into getting into a retail. So at the same time, once this online started coming in, so that's where a uh, few of my colleagues and those things started selling me like. Please rethink about it because the space, as you told, in Cochin is very expensive and at the same time the way you need to put it across to people is very expensive. Do you see that market getting or? Do you see that? Online marketing. Online sales. Yeah. Do you, do you think that would uh, uh, give you a better margin or look at something on uh, online itself? See, uh, how, how, what is your opinion like uh, how it will grow uh, every day? I will give, I'll give you two answers, one old answer and one new answer. Yeah. Okay. The old answer is that uh, everything will survive. You know what happens is when you are used to buying a particular item by looking at it, feeling it or even seeing it, the uh, e-commerce thing uh, sometimes doesn't work that way. Sometimes you know what happens is the uh, camera takes a picture of a particular color that color may not be the true color that you get in the uh, screen that you uh, get. So then unnecessarily what happens is you start a blame game with the supplier that he has given me the wrong uh, product. So uh, even for things like rice for example, when you are buying rice from a provision shop, you want to feel the rice, you want to uh, pour it down onto the vessel again, see the uh, sound of that uh, grain actually falling down and then you might even uh, put a few grains into your mouth, taste the rice and then buy it. Right? So, to that extent, the uh, brick and mortar shop has to remain where it is. The e-commerce comes in, in uh, products where you can guarantee the technical stuff uh, of… A branded, branded yeah, thing. A branded thing, of course. No, but in branded also, it can be out of fashion. Damage, it can have any no, forget damage. Damage, let's keep it out because there's a so consumer forum of it. Like, for example, you are ordering a mobile phone and you are not getting what they have promised. Those features are not No, but there. those can be rectified. What we are trying to say is only if it is a technically uh, opinionated stuff that, okay, that uh, uh, this is the mobile phone I've ordered, so many MB and so many hours of this thing, this is the battery, everything. Technically, that is what is actually hitting the market actually. So, you will find electronics, uh, mobile phones, gadgets, uh, these type of things basically uh, you will find going on to e-commerce. So, finally, what are we left with? We have to come out with a situation where you come into omni-channel retailing, where you have… Customized. 
you have all three in one. That is, you should be able to see the product, you should be able to buy it at the e-commerce price, and you need not stock it also, you can always procure it and give it to them. These boys have got uh, brilliant ideas. If you take the uh, concept of provisions being supplied in Bombay, let's take uh, this e-banya, uh, uh, what is it, localbanya.com. Big basket. Big basket. No, a lot of people have started. A lot of people have started. But what they are really doing is it is not their product or anything like that. They are only trading again. The real thing will happen is when it's your own produce being sold as an e-commerce product. Or probably like uh, as uh, we were discussing, uh, why, why a person need to go to Jalakshmi Hello? Because there is, see, if you look at that way, it is not been that much branded. Yeah. A customized one to a certain extent or a jewellery is a customized one. No, but you have this faith about the quality and the fashion. That they are uh, up a little ahead of them in fashion. Yeah, there is one last thing which I wanted to actually. Uh, do you want to say anything about uh, huh? on the e-commerce thing? I don't have anything else to add. Okay, I think we'll stop okay. that. Yeah, I think uh, just to sum up uh, today's uh, discussions, I think when we started in Thai Governing Council, cleared this uh, coffee pet charcha, which was basically on an informal setting, you know, discussing with successful businessmen. Uh, this is the fourth, as uh, Ajit Mopan mentioned, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Deepak and his family for taking us through such a wonderful session, Deepak. I think a big round of applause for this. Uh, you, may, you may wonder why uh, we are videographing it. Uh, basically, what we're going to do here is, you know, we all know the uh, TED Talks. I mean, many of you have gone to the YouTube and done the TED Talk. Uh, Thai Global has got what is called Thai Talk. So we are the only out of 60 chapters in the world. Thai Kerala is the only chapter which is doing this coffee by Charcha. So this will be, we'll make a 10 minute capsule in terms of the key learnings from each session and then put it into Thai Talks. I think in the Thai Global, if you Google Thai Global, uh, but it will not come very soon because we're going to take our own time to sort of edit it because it's a two, two and a half hour session and this is a fourth one. Uh, we are also going to have our Tycon on November 6th and 7th. Uh, by the time we would have done about six, uh, this is the fourth, at least six uh, coffee page archa. We are bringing out a booklet of key learnings from each of the successful business icons. And this will be released during the Tycon, which is slated for November 6th and 7th. So this will figure in that. Uh, basically, uh, today the talk is, you know, from moving from a family business to business family. Uh, I could feel that as I sat through the last, uh, uh, I would say, three hours or so. I think Aswani is not a family business. I think you are a business family with multiple skills, uh, multiple orientations, and I could feel and sense it in terms of things what you guys have been doing. I would quickly summarize uh, in terms of key learnings which will form in this booklet uh, which we are going to publish. Uh, one is that he told the story of his father, look for diversification you know, from cigarettes to uh, clothing. I think it was a brilliant example. Uh, cigarettes, what it is, investment, I think. I would like to, I don't, I wanted to ask that question, but I didn't understand why I was an MBA, but that reverse accounting of your father, uh, going through the, uh, uh, the balance sheet, I think Neha will be able to teach me what your grandfather-in-law used to do. I mean, I didn't understand that because looking at assets and liabilities and continuing the business, maybe that's the reason why he continued to put money into the cigarette business. Okay, there's nothing right or wrong about that, but it's something which is key learning. So, diversifying at the right time. Also, what Jodi mentioned from distribution to own outlets. Uh, My Kingdom, Priceless, are very typical success stories where uh, I think Shudas Miran asked the right question in terms of why didn't you go to manufacturing. Maybe, I don't know, I'm just thinking loud. The thought process was clear. You look at the options, and which is the best better option. And they found maybe the my kingdom and priceless was better than going for own manufacturing uh, and apart from the power cost what uh, Deepak rightly mentioned because uh, power costs are typically high in India, uh, in Kerala. So that's the first learning, look for diversification at the right time. I was very fascinated, I mean we talk about uh, his father who came from the partition days and I, I really admire uh, the performance metric you told, 20 BDs to one cigarette. 
very striking. Yeah. And then you were told as the business grew, it became five BDs to one cigarette. <laughs> you know, you are looking, you are slicing up the market, what we all taught uh, in the business schools as MBAs in terms of segmentation, you know, which to whom you are competing against. So that kind of performance market metric is, is a good learning. I think as my friend sitting next to Siodas when I told, I think the humility which came out is fascinating because humble beginnings is something you should be proud of, yes. not to be shy of. I think that's what came out when you say, I don't know, 40, 50 years back, 25,000 rupees, you know, uh, uh, Jodi saying, I have 16 siblings and I, I wanted to ask how many girls and how many boys. Okay. No, father, father. I know that he has got only two. <laughs> Uh, you know, in terms of those kind of humble beginnings is something which you can be proud of. And I will tell you this, uh, recently there is a lot of controversy going on about Amazon. I don't know, some people would have read it in the, in the media. A lot of controversy going on about Amazon. Uh, there is New, New York Times published this, uh, turbulence and some title. And, and then Amazon has given a rebuff to that because they say,